There are six behaviours you should never tolerate in a man. Let's find out what they are in this video. Hey, it's Renee here from thefemininewoman.com where we teach you how to show up as a high value, high status woman whom easily inspires a deep emotional commitment from men. Today, I want to talk to you about six behaviours that you should never tolerate in men. Just quickly, if you want the full version of this content, then the full article with all the details is in the blog post. I will put the link in the description below. Let's get started. Now, cheating and abuse are the first things people think of when they consider what they should never tolerate in a relationship. This video is not going to be about cheating or abuse. Why? Because firstly, whilst of course abuse should not be tolerated, abuse is actually a wide topic. It goes far beyond just physical abuse. Sometimes the behaviours that seem the most innocent on the surface can actually be deeply abusive. And you know, that's a lot to discuss. So I want to reserve that topic of abuse and that conversation for another time where I can thoroughly explore the issues surrounding abuse. Secondly, cheating is one thing that is too obvious. This particular video is not going to be about the obvious surface stuff. Not to mention that saying something like, oh, you should never tolerate cheating would be lazy on my part because Cheating occurs in many different contexts and it goes a lot deeper than just saying you should never tolerate your man cheating on you. Sure, you should not just sit there and take a man cheating on you up the bum. However, it's not true that cheating should always be a deal breaker. Because it depends on why the cheater cheated and what kind of person the cheater actually is. Of course, sometimes not cheating can be just as bad as actually cheating. You see, one may not cheat on their partner, but for the sake of their own outdated rules, may stay faithful on the surface to their partner. All the while, they're ignoring real relationship issues and building up resentment towards their partner, which is a horrible thing to do to someone. Okay, now we're ready to talk about the six behaviors that you should never tolerate in a man. Okay. Number one, a man who doesn't value connection in a relationship. Why do you have a relationship? To avoid loneliness? To get permanent residency or citizenship? To get rich? To get a steady stream of sex? To have children? Hopefully not. But these things do happen. And that's not wrong. It's just not ideal for building emotional attraction and emotional connection in a relationship. Why do we have a relationship again? Hopefully, we have a relationship to connect. I know this is not always the case. In fact, many people have relationships to take, take and strip what they can from the other person. You may know someone who does this. That's not a relationship though. Those situations deteriorate rapidly and that is also a kind of abuse. Go to a man who wants to connect. Now, I want to be clear. I don't mean to say, go to a man who is willing to call you more often. How often a man calls you is not a reliable indicator of whether he values connection or not. His choices in life and his behavior when you are together is a more reliable indicator coupled with how connected it makes you feel to be with him. Now, this is a hard one because, for example, if I don't inherently value connection myself, then I may not ever even notice if a man values connection or not because I would not be connected myself. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to zoom out and look at this person objectively. Ask yourself, does this man's day-to-day -day actions reflect a man who values connection with me? Or does it more reflect a man who is looking for validation, approval or novelty? Now let's go to number two. He tolerates you being a user or a bitch. A man tolerating you being horrible to him is no worse 
than you tolerating him being horrible to you. Why? Because we all need feedback in order to function healthily. A woman not regulated by a smart man is potentially dangerous to her peers and to herself, very much the same way as a man not receiving feedback or responsiveness from a woman can be dangerous to society proceeding to hurt other people without consequences because, well, nobody cares to give those consequences. We're not talking about punishment here. I'm not saying that a man should punish you for being horrible or being a user. I'm saying that you are a human and you deserve to be taught how to treat others right. And I'll insert a quick disclaimer here. I would like you to please differentiate between a man who's criticizing your behavior and a man who's giving you supportive, loving feedback or simply just giving you good moral boundaries. I don't want you to think that a man giving you criticism so that he can feel superior means that he's doing you any good. He may not be. The key in this is that he has to have good intent. He has to have the intent to want to see you do better. You need that. I need that. Everybody else needs that. It's a gift. It shows us. It teaches us how to relate. Without it, then we can spend the rest of our lives living a mediocre quality of life with people not wanting to interact with us or be close to us. Let's talk about number three, bad hygiene. If you've given someone feedback about their hygiene and they consistently refuse to do anything to change it, because maybe they shouldn't have to, or because they just don't care, then you have a problem. The person who won't change their habits that lead to dirty private parts or an extremely stinky body may not care about other important things that affect you either. That one was pretty self-explanatory. Now let's talk about number four. He takes no responsibility for his decisions and actions. When something inconvenient happens, it is always someone else's fault. Now, if someone blames others a lot, then they are either under a lot of overwhelming stress or they have not evolved beyond the very basic impulses humans have, or they just don't care. Has someone ever said to you, well, you should stop doing that. If you didn't do that, then I wouldn't behave like this. Sound familiar? Sure, perhaps we could have behaved better. But if somebody truly believes what they are saying, when they say, if you would not do that, then I would not need to act like this, hurt you, punish you, degrade you, for example, then they are avoiding responsibility for their own actions. We all have a responsibility to try to take responsibility for our own actions. If one is not even willing to entertain that idea, and they place all the blame on you, then they are not the right person for you. Sometimes people cannot handle the fact that they hurt you. Sometimes people cannot handle the truth if it means acknowledging that they played a large part in something bad that happened. Yes, there are times where one party in the relationship has more responsibility than the other, like say a parent-child relationship. Simply calling the child a problem child, for example, is just not good enough. The parent has a responsibility to love and influence their child or deal with the consequences. So the ideal aim for you and me in an adult relationship is this. Whoever comes to their senses first takes responsibility. Don't wait unless you guys have very little trust established in the relationship. Just go for it. Just take responsibility. Whoever comes to their senses first takes responsibility in the moment. Don't blame, take responsibility. Be a team member. Why would I recommend that whomever comes to their senses first takes responsibility? Because leadership. By being a leader, you have way more true power in your relationships. Okay, I hope number four made sense. Now let's talk about number five, a man who shows no agreeableness. What's agreeableness? Agreeableness is when someone displays behaviors that can be described as kind, sympathetic, 
cooperative, warm and considerate. So, has he ever been kind? Has your man ever been warm? I ask specifically if he has ever been warm because one can act kind or caring on the surface but little warmth accompanies their actions. So don't kid yourself, just because someone seems caring or considerate, and perhaps if there's not many people being caring or considerate in your life right now, then any surface caring action can make that person seem like a saint. But don't kid yourself, anyone can display surface caring behavior. Ask yourself, does this man display warmth towards you to animals or to anyone else? Do you feel like he cares for you or for any other person related to him? Has he ever proven to be sympathetic or considerate of your situation or your feelings? A man who scores low in agreeableness is more likely to have a personality that falls into what is known as the dark triad. The dark triad accompanies narcissism, Machiavellianism and psychopathy. Okay, now we're down to the last one, number six. He has no real passions or masculine missions. Now, I would like you to know that repetitive patterns of anger is not necessarily a sign of passion. Resentment is also not a sign of passion, even if it's intense. Learn to appreciate the difference between anger and real passion. Yes, anger can be a sign of passion, of course, but not if the anger is done just to give himself an easy but fake feeling of superiority. Anger is passion when it comes from a belief in practicing basic morals. And anger is passion when it is expressed to show that you are hurting him. Anger is passion if it is demanding truth. Anger is passion when, when it is connected to his passion or mission. Anger is passion if you're angry because you truly want better for the other person or your family. Always look and see if a man has a track record of losing his temper regularly as a way of avoiding the truth, as a way of not letting you get through to him, or as a way of manipulating you. Those are something you should really think about seriously before tolerating. Sometimes men have anger as a way of coping. And sometimes a man uses anger because he has no other decent way to cope with life. And in this case, you probably shouldn't just leave him without further thought because that may not be his fault. You really need to take the time to consider carefully whether you being kind to him by reassuring him when he's angry or being loving when he's angry or giving your feminine healing energy when he's angry. Would any of those things drastically help him or not? Because sometimes all our attempts to give ourselves emotionally as a gift can be blocked out or ignored. These are the cases where you should not tolerate any further. Some people are too far gone to be responsive to your efforts. Remember that passions are things that you care deeply for. Passions are things that you go through great discomfort to pursue and achieve. Passions are beliefs that you would die on the cross for. Passions scream at us to give something to the world, to create and express ourselves. Without this passion, then over time, your relationship would lose attraction and passion. You may even lose respect for him. Okay, so in conclusion, we should ask ourselves, what does it mean to not tolerate a behavior in a man? Let's be clear about the word tolerate. What does it mean to not tolerate these six behaviors in a man? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to leave him right now. I didn't make this video so that you could immediately leave your boyfriend. Unless, of course, you had already mostly made up your mind and this video just helped steer you towards the best decision. But you might need some time to think carefully. 
to observe him objectively, not with emotion, because it is hard to observe correctly when you're blinded by your own emotion. It might mean conducting more research. It might mean asking other people who know him what they think of him. Is he warm? What happened in his past relationships? It might mean studying his Facebook posts and thinking about what impression his posts give to the average human being, observing from another computer. Either way, to tolerate means to not allow such behaviour to continue existing in your relationship. It means for you to have values and rules for the right reasons. And it means to stick to those values because you value your time, which is finite. I hope that made sense. Now, would you consider letting me know your thoughts? Leave me a comment below and let's all join this discussion. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these six behaviours. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, that's enough from me. All the links are below and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, I've also put together an exciting little quiz for you. The quiz is called How Commitment Friendly Is My Man? It's only a handful of questions and you'll get to learn exactly how likely it is that your man will commit. I'll add the link to that below this video. I think you'll love it. Anyhow, that's all from me. Bye-bye.